Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam Ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursaleen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Amma ba'd Ayyu al-ikhwa Tilkiram Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Wa ba'd Wa nasa'alullah ta'ala An yataqabbal minna Wa yaghfir lana dhunubana نسأله بعلم نافع ورزق واسع وعليه نتوكل وإليه المصير ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds, peace and blessings on his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After saying salams to you, we ask Allah, our Lord, our creator, our goal, our return, our originator, we ask him for his acceptance of our any of our good deeds to purify our, our intention and our hearts from uh, hypocrisy and from uh, doing any kind of shirk with him. We ask Allah to give us wide, uh, to give us um, knowledge and understanding um, and wide sustenance and on Allah, we utterly depend to him is our goal. There is no power and might except that of Allah. Glory be to him. Uh, brothers and sisters, carrying on from um, uh, really where we left off last time, um, I, I mentioned that we were going to look at, uh, we finished with uh, the first sort of uh, section of, or you could say the second section of Hadith 14, let me remind us of the hadith in case there's new people who joined us. Uh, of course, it is always difficult for new people joining that they, what they've missed before, of course, but I hope and pray people still benefit if they missed things. And also for people who have not been there from the beginning of the 40 hadith uh, classes. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry if the stuff I've covered and I try to, um, I'm not trying to fob off the questioning at the end. Uh, um, but um, if I've answered something in detail, I don't like answering it then in few words because it can give a uh, different impression, especially if it's a more complex issue. So uh, just to remind us, Al-Hadith Al-Rabi Al-Ashr wa ma huwa an ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yahillu damum li'in muslimin illa bi ihda thalas الثيب الزاني والنفس بالنفس والتارك لدينه المفارق للجماعة رواه البخاري ومسلم. Um, reported from Abdullah ibn Masood that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the uh, spilling of the blood of a Muslim cannot be done except in three situations. Uh, a thayyibu zani, the married person committing adultery, life for a life, and the one who leaves their deen and separates from uh, the the jama'ah, the, the community. So the first part is la yahilu dam umri muslimin. It is not li, uh, li, uh, allowed to spill the blood of a Muslim. And that's the part I want to focus on uh, today, uh, specifically, or part of that anyway. We say it's, the, the topic is more comprehensive than that. We dealt with Athayyibu Zani in a great detail, the issue of adultery, fornication, zina, uh, and all the things surrounding it for the last uh, few sessions. Um, what... Um, we want to focus on partly on today is the dignity of the human being, not just the Muslim, but actually the human being. Here it mentions the Muslim. That's not to say uh, it, that the blood of the disbelievers can be spilt uh, willy nilly, any old how. <laughs> it, uh, and we mustn't misunderstand uh, from this hadith that. But you see, in the case of a, a disbeliever, believer who's at war then it becomes legal to spill the blood in a war situation that's the only perhaps exception you can add to this for a disbeliever yeah so it won't be three then 
So this is why it mentioned the, the Muslim here. Sometimes the word Muslim is used in a, 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 a general sense by the Prophet وسلم, as well. But it can mean the human being. Uh, in one hadith, for example, the Prophet وسلم, which is authentic, is reported to have said, uh, Al-Muslim, man salim al-Muslim, uh, man salim, uh, a Muslim is the one from whose hand and tongue Muslims uh, are safe. Yeah. So you, uh, before you run into the idea that this means just Muslims, uh, and people like Anawi and other scholars have said, no, this is referring, and the Sa'i actually reports this, and I mentioned this before, the same hadith, with different words, yeah, which shows you the interchange of Muslim with a nas. And the Sa'i reports the hadith that authentically from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi saying, Al Muslim man salim al nasu, man salim al nasu min yadihi wa min lisani, or uh, min lisani wa min yadi. A Muslim is the one from who, whom people, human beings, are safe from his or her hands or tongue. Yeah. So I make my point how a nas and Muslim can, it's, it's general uh, uh, use of language, yeah? Uh, and I mentioned this similar for Rajul as well, to mean a person, not a man only, yeah? Many times, this is how uh, um, uh, classical speech uh, uh, was and can be in everyday language. People don't uh, talk with definitions, yeah? It's just general uh, a statement. So here, it can cover the, the, the human beings anyway. So this point is about safeguarding the life of people. Yeah, and all of that is linked with the dignity of karama that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created human beings with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah uh, Bani Israel, Surah number 17, verse 70, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِّنْ خَلَقُنَا تَفْضِيلًا Indeed, indeed, we have honored the children of Adam. Children of Adam isn't referring just to Muslim human beings. We Allah is saying He's honored them, given them karama, nobility, His creation, uh, and we carried them on the land and the sea. Allah SWT made the means available for carrying them on the lands and land and the sea. And we nourish them from all that which is wholesome and good. Allah meaning, Allah saying, we provided human beings with food there with as well. Tayyibat uh, means food and drink. And we yeah, um, and we exalted them, yeah, distinguished them uh, over much of Allah saying what we created, what Allah created from his creatures, uh, and, and distinguished them with real distinguishing. Yeah, or uh, or uh, exalted them. Yeah, this is a karama of all human beings that Allah SWT mentions uh, in the uh, in the Quran. So uh, other verses talking about the karama of human beings, Allah SWT says, "لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم." Uh, that we indeed we created the human being in the best of forms, the best of forms. Taqweem here doesn't mean the best of outward appearance, you know. Many people think that means best physically. No, no, best uh, as a whole, yeah, the human being. And this is again an ayah which is linked with the karama and nobility of the human being. And, and that idea is there in the very beginning when Allah SWT creates the human being saying to the angels yeah. and when your Lord remember when your Lord sent to the angels 
surely I'm about uh, going to create for on on earth. Yeah, on earth, Khalifa. Khalifa. Khalifa, many people translate it as being a vicegerent, a representative of God. Yeah, it can have that meaning, but Khalifa also means, comes from the word, the, the one that has generations. Yeah, khalf ba'da khalf. Yeah, generation after generation that keeps on uh, going on through reproduction. Yeah. So it can have that meaning and the meaning of uh, vicegerency uh, as well, which is an honorable position, isn't it? Uh, yeah, for Bani Adam, for the children of Adam, whether they take it on board and take that is, uh, is, a, is a secondary matter, but Allah SWT created them uh, with that nobility. Um, it is mentioned in Sahih Muslim from uh, Ibn Abi Layla, that Qais ibn Sa'ad and Sahal ibn Hunayf, uh, they were at Qadisiya. Yeah, this is in the land of the um, uh, Persians, yeah, the Zoroastrians, the fire worshippers in their land. Um, These are two Sahabi. And a funeral went by, so they stood up. Yeah, they stood up out of respect for the dead uh, passing of, uh, by of the funeral, the uh, beer. Faqila lahuma, it was said to them, yeah, min ahlil ard. They said to them, he's the one who's passing by, this janazah, this dead person, is from the local people, they're, they're mushriks in other words. They're not believers. Yeah, فَقَالَ So both of them, what did they say? They said, إِنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَرَّتْ بِهِ جَنَازَةً فَقَامَ فَقَامَ فَقِيل They said, at the time of the Prophet, Prophet Sallallahu with a, a funeral yeah, procession went by and the Prophet Sallallahu stood up and it was said to him, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, yeah, it is, it, is a, it is a Jew, yeah, Faqal, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, Alaysat nafsan, is it not a soul? Is it not a being, a person? Yeah, this is that dignity and karama and respect for the human being, yeah, as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaching uh, from this uh, uh, hadith. Um, Uh, the idea of Ahsan um, taqwim uh, being created in the best or a form again comes out when Allah SWT says, Khalaqa samawati wal arda bil haqq wa sawarakum fa ahsana suwarakum wa ilayhi al masir. As in Surah Taghab, Allah SWT says, He created the heavens and the earth in truth, yeah, and He shaped you. And what an excellent shape, yeah? What an excellent shape. And to him is the goal or the return. What an excellent shape, yeah? Uh, form, again, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be limited to just outward form. Uh, it's talking about the human being as a being. And in fact, the essence of human being, uh, the distinguishing factor of a human being and his, his, his or her nobility I don't have to say his or her. When I say he, the human being, of course it covers both, but you know, in the world nowadays, sometimes uh, people get very touchy about that. Um, uh, anyway, I don't want to be dragged into that uh, uh, discussion. Um, but anyway, the human being's real nobility is not, uh, is not really, uh, 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 not especially in the physical form, yeah? but it is in the intellect and the mind and the, the heart. That is what really, uh, that that free will and choice that Allah SWT gave and the intellect and ability to learn that Allah SWT uh, uh, gave to the human being as he taught the names to Adam yeah, salam, uh, in paradise before he even sent the human beings down. That ability to name and to learn the intellect that he gave, which even the angels did possess. They were stumped by, uh, by that. Yeah, that perhaps is the real nobility. Um, so, in regards to uh, 
the dignity of uh, the human being, if we the if we're talking about the dignity of the human being, how does that translate? And the translation of that, perhaps we can say, and we get that idea from Islam, is that the human being has been given that special position. Everything in the heavens and the earth, Allah SWT says, was sakhara. Yeah, yeah, we made it uh, uh, available. And he has subjected to you all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, all from him. Verily, in that are signs for a people who think and reflect. Yeah, think and reflect linking with human beings maybe it's a special that's bringing out the speciality of the human being by the way in, at the end of the ayah as well but everything being subjugated made available for the human beings yeah that is part of the karama uh, or, or the nobility and the human being being uh, uh, part of that is uh, the uh, Safe, safeguarding of every human being's soul, that's part of it. Safeguarding uh, life, yeah? Safeguarding uh, his or her honor. Safeguarding his consciousness, his decision, yeah? His choice, yeah? That is part and parcel of the dignity of the human being that Islam actually, uh, Islam actually gives, yeah? Islam actually gives. And, uh, uh, and actually, um, that includes the choice of uh, religion, choice of religion. Uh, yeah. From them are those who are disbelievers and those who are uh, 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 believers. Allah SWT says it in the Quran. Allah SWT says, لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي There is no compulsion in religion. Yeah, uh, uh, rushed guide. Yeah, truth has been made distinct and clear from that which is deviant and false. Yeah, Allah SWT has made, but that the choice is for the human being uh, with the nobility Allah created them in the intellect and the choice to either come forward and submit or to reject. Yeah, as Allah SWT says, Wakuli Rabbikum. Say, the truth is from your Lord. Yours in the plural, your Lord. So whoever wills, then let him or her believe. And whoever wills, let him or her reject. Yeah, of course, there's consequences to that. That's a different story. But the choice in the end is there. So that's why when you uh, look at the ulama who dealt with maqasid al-sharia, and if any of you studied maqasid al-sharia, the objectives of the sharia, uh, and uh, this is not something new, but ulama of deep understanding of religion, yeah, the beacons of light of the ulama, uh, uh, throughout the centuries mentioned this idea uh, of the objectives of sharia, and especially so uh, from early time, especially so the likes of Ibn al-Qayyim, Imam Ghazali before that as well, uh, the Imam Ghazali, um, and then um, the likes of Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn Taymiyyah, Ibn al-Qayyim writes a lot about it, Imam Qarafi, uh, and uh, a Shatabi, of course, from the Malikiya as well, uh, they write extensively. Maqas the Sharia, the objective of the Sharia, ulama divided the, the, the rules and regulations of Sharia into three major areas, yeah? The top they put as the yeah? The absolute necessities, which, uh, which Sharia came to cover. The second they put al-hajiyat, yeah? This is, and the third they put at-tahsiniyat. They, they put them in this priority, but within each of them are things which are uh, uh, fad and things which are haram. Yeah, it's not the tahsiniyat to do, to do with just little uh, matters that are not important. No, 
but the zaruriyat and of of you could say the highest and absolute importance yeah and hajiyat are crucial because they are facilitations or ruhas for difficult situations to facilitate being able to live for example a person dying can't eat dead or khanzir but that's all the choice they have they are allowed to eat it for protecting life so what briefly the zaruriyat are to do with the dignity of the human being amongst the zaruriyat the absolute necessities are protection protection of deen deen many ulama classically in present day say protection of deen from islam means protection of islam and muslims and the islamic religion no others that's not actually the best understanding here as i said earlier the best understanding from the quran sunna is the protection of deen means also the protection of choosing the deen yeah? from the zaruriyat yeah that you have given the human beings the choice yeah yeah the idea was never that under the sword they have to submit otherwise they're going to be killed that would be against the quran and sunna and actually unfortunately many many people not an insignificant number of uh, imams over the centuries till this day have this uh, ups topsy turvy idea yeah but actually here protection of deen uh, protection of conscience in other words to choose which deen to follow or to follow no deen so protection of deen it means that protection of life yeah the nobility is shown in the protection of life that's why killing uh, killing is haram and which is what we're dealing with is in the hadith la yahillu dam umri in muslimin illa yeah the taking of uh, spilling of blood uh, of a muslim is not allowed except and here muslim human beings is not uh, allowed uh, uh, except uh, in um, in those situations and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions it um uh, further of course allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to uh, um, uh killing wala taqtulun nas allati harrama allah illa bil haqq and do not kill any person except uh, 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 and do not kill any person uh, that allah has made haram prohibited except in in the way of justice and truth that's for as all ulama said that's for the the qadi the government yeah for law to establish uh including in this hadith uh, all said this is to do with the law not for people to take law in their own hand and do willy-nilly what they wish min ajli dhalik yeah um uh, as it mentions for uh allah swt mentions in the quran uh for bani israel but its revelation is uh, for us as well um man qatala nafsan yeah man qatala nafs uh, nafsan uh bi ghayri nafsin fa ka'anna ma qatala an-nas jami'a yeah whoever kills a person yeah not out of retribution for murder uh, uh yes qatala nafsin bi ghayri nafsin aw fasad fi al-ard afwan missed that bit or corruption in the in the land yeah these things are to be decided by the government and the law not for you know joe blogs down the road and uh, mr abdullah who on live down the street says well this neighbor of mine has done fasad on the land i'm going to go and kill him yeah no this is for the governments to decide uh, so uh, what is corruption in the land so whoever kills except it's a retribution for murder again to be decided by the courts or by the government for uh, fasad corruption in the land fa ka'anna ma qatala an-nas jami'a it's as though that person has killed the whole of humanity wa man ahyaha fa ka'anna ma ahya 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 an-nas jami'a whoever saves the life of a person it's as though they have saved the life of the life of the whole of humanity that is the sanctity of life 
Yeah, that is the, the nobility of all human life, um, which Quran and Sunnah uh, uh, bear. And that's why it's part of the Dhuriyat protection of all life, yeah, which is being indicated indirectly in this hadith. People tend to jump in and focus on the three, the three that I mentioned, which is the uh, married person committing adultery and the life for a life for murder and the one leaving the deen and separate from the jamaat. They focus on that. But the first part of it is really crucial because the asal or the foundation, yeah, the very foundation of, uh, of deen of existence is that life is protected. That's why it means it's giving you the exception, but you, you miss the beginning part. Yeah, which is the dignity of life that it's bringing out. Yeah, so the, from the Dhuriyat, protection of the choice of religion, protection of uh, life, protection of the mind, the aql. Yeah, protection of aql. And uh, aql here uh, uh, means again to do with consciousness. Yeah, it's linked again with choice. Yeah, uh, and hence. Uh, uh, ulama mentioned that anything that inebriates or uh, destroys from drugs or, or, or alcohol, hammer, etc., that is being made forbidden, yeah, to protect the mind so that it, uh, uh, because that's one of the, the very uh, uh, characters of the nobility of the human being, yeah. Uh, the protection of wealth of a person and property. Uh, not to usurp, not to flee, a thief, not to steal. Yeah, these are, uh, uh, and the, finally the protection of an honor of a person. Yeah, honor or al uh, ilt or an nesel or nesel, both are used interchangeably, but actually it means the same thing in the end. And hence the uh, the forbidding of zina, which is what we talked about before. Yeah, uh, because it's not seen as honorable; it's seen as uh, dirty, the wrong way. Uh, to uh, for human beings to to live their lives, yeah, uh, and the, uh, which we uh, covered last time. But and part of that is slander being protected from the honor of a person being protected. That's why slander uh, is haram, riba is haram. They're from the major sins, yeah, to spread slander, rumors, and even uh, 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 backbiting people. Yeah, these come under. Those things which have been uh, made haram, yeah, because it's in line with protecting protecting the honor and nobility uh, of human beings. Um, so I mentioned that because uh, nobility is very much linked with that. But when I talk about the foundation, and I brought that out when we uh, also um, um, dealt with. Uh, in uh, uh, hadith number eight, uh, for those who weren't there, you should have a uh, reference to the recording of it. We are into great detail, but that one is a well misunderstood, well misrepresented, mistranslated, and uh, and and mis um, explained uh, hadith. And but very dangerous. I've been ordered to fight with people until they declare the shahada, etc. If you look, that's people think that that's their the, the foundation. Yet I, I picked, some people got the idea that I have been sent just to go and uh, and kill people. But look at to come to that understanding, you've got to be twisted in your mind. Because Islam, what does Islam mean? Submission and peace. And you can't ignore all the ayat of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet about good behavior, about trust, about kindness, about mercy, about forgiveness, and his life and his character, about patience, yeah, overlooking, and throw them all to one side and say, no, the, the, the basis is of a killing a fighting. And we put a context to that hadith, yeah, after mentioning. Uh, uh, the fact that a nas uh, here in that hadith doesn't mean all of humanity. Yeah? And it was referring specifically to that context. And in fact, the context needs to be seen. One hadith which was authentic brought out that context, if you remember, and that was hadith of Ali radiallahu an, who was going into battle 
at the request of the Prophet on the day of Khaybar with the enemies who had been fighting the believers and been yeah, perpetrating attacks on Medina. So the war had been declared on Medina. Prophet wasn't taking the offensive, but the defensive yeah, in protection. Even going to Khaybar, it was a defensive uh, attack. And when Ali Zadalahan, uh, Prophet gives him the banner, promising him victory, he's going forward. He asked the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, what am I fighting on? Then the Prophet said the words of this hadith. Yeah. That umirtu an uqatil an nas. Yeah. Similar words that, in other words, you're fighting, you're fighting the enemy, yeah, who have declared war on us. But even then, you stop fighting when they do a shahada and Quran brings out other things about a great submitting about making peace that we we are uh, foremost in making peace yeah and, and jizya for those who are war mongers yeah about the people who are soldiers yeah that they are to be charged this uh, tax to stop them prevent them from taking up armed uh, arms again yeah this so the hadith context is a warfare context but Islam and life isn't war. The foundation isn't war. Yeah. So many people not only misrepresented that hadith, but misrepresent the ayat in the Quran, which they called ayatul saif. The various opinions of which is ayatul saif, but most popularly, uh, as I mentioned with the, that particular hadith number eight, uh, uh, ayah number uh, five in Surah Tawbah, where Allah SWT says, فَإِذَنْ سَلَخَ أَشْهُرُ الْحُرُمْ so when the, uh, the 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 sacred months have uh, ended, then kill the mushriks wherever you find them. That's not the you can't just take that verse out of context. Yeah, it's talking about warfare. It's talking about the mushrikeen who had uh, broken the treaty with the prophet and are still going around. Uh, plundering and attacking uh, 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 believers, they were still at war. Uh, so that's the context. That's not the normal situation. Some people use this ayah from uh, uh, scholars and presented a deviant view, a battle opinion, saying that now the, the asal after this ayah is that we are war and we kill everybody who are disbelievers, whether from Mushriks or from Christians and Jews, until they submit. That's the uh, what you call that's the uh, status quo. This is absolute nonsense. They actually using this ayah, as I mentioned before, uh, 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 abrogated wrongly, yeah, deviantly more than a hundred plus verses of the Quran and the very character of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi All to do with sabr, all to do with forgiveness, all to do with da'wah, all to do with. A kindness, etc., all thrown out of the window. Allah's, Allah's uh, guidance didn't come like that. Uh, and in fact, uh, I don't want to go into that uh, anymore, but that's just to bring you out uh, uh, the idea again that the, the status quo is that of dignity for human beings, yeah? safety for human beings. Yeah? Al Muslim man say man nasu min lisanihi wa min yadi hadith aladhi rawahu al nasai sahih which I mentioned uh, earlier in the talk today. Yeah, a Muslim is the one from whose hands human beings and his tongue are they they feel safe. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used the same uh, root word uh, salima. Yeah, and uh, 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 as he's using the word Muslim, meaning the very meaning of you being Muslim is supposed to be this. Yeah, so the status quo, that is the status quo. Yeah, and even when we are actually uh, critical of people who are disbelievers or idol worshippers, etc., etc., we are critical of the the doing, the behavior, but the person. We mustn't treat like dirt and we mustn't look down upon uh, and judge them as they're going to hellfire. And we decide as though they're going to hellfire because we don't know what the end of people are going to be. Yeah, Allah uh, in the Quran, we, we're not denying the Quran. We say what the Quran says, those who disbelieve, those who cheat, those who deceive, etc., etc., about the, those kind of characters. 
will lead to hellfire or from the Hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But uh, a shaks muayyan, a particular person, we can't point the finger and say, we can say these are deeds, which are the deeds of the people of hellfire. Go to you, be careful, don't go into these, don't fall that way, don't follow shaitan, don't listen to whispers of shaitan. That's, this is all fine, yeah? But we're not, in, we're not in a position, any of us, to judge anybody. That's not being judgmental. Yeah, if people don't want to hear that, they can't just point the finger and say you're being judgmental. No, yeah, and this is again supposed to be done in, in the best manner, yeah, in a loving way. If you can't do it in a loving way to people, then don't bother doing it. Better, as we'll see from a hadith later on, better to stay stumped and keep your mouth closed uh, if you're going to insult people. Um, so the um. The, the, the um, what was I saying? The, 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 with the dignity of the, the, uh, the human being is to be critical of what people are doing, but the file, the person, yeah, treat people in a dignified manner, yeah, not in a cruel manner and not in an arrogant manner, looking down on people. Um, and, and that's what we got taught by our teachers uh, in the 80s and 90s uh, in, in regards to Dawa. People in the field of Dawa especially know uh, this kind of thing. And um, um, there's a book that was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I remember um, uh, our dear teacher, a brother, uh, uh, Farouk Murad's uh, father, uh, Ustad uh, Khoda Murad, Rahimahullah, I remember him distinctly teaching us that um, it is not about winning the argument, but it is about winning the hearts. Yeah. And that's what we remember. And this is when you're talking and doing dawah to people of all kinds of backgrounds. Yeah, however evil their life must appear, but the idea. One other thing is not about winning the argument and, and looking superior and looking better, but it's about winning the heart, even though you may lose the argument. Yeah. So it's about winning the hearts of people. It's about touching the hearts of people with truth. Many people became Muslim just with their neighbors or their colleagues, the way it treated them, and, and they didn't do any preaching on them. Yeah, they weren't standing with uh, read, giving lectures or standing at Hyde Park having long discussions and argument. In fact, our teachers in Dawa certainly they were critical of people doing the kind of Dawa which involved involved debates. Yeah, yeah, munadara, yeah, munadara, uh, and uh, in Arabic, al muhawara is different from al munadara. Have muhawara, which is conversation, because that brings out. Uh, uh, Munatasha and Muhawra brings out uh, gentleness, kindness, listening to the other. Munadara is a debate that tends to bring out the worst uh, in approach of, uh, of putting somebody else down and making your argument look good. Uh, it's, it's not the best way. I'm not saying people don't embrace Islam from it, and they have done, but it's not the best way, uh, I believe, of, of doing that one. So anyway, um, I haven't even gone in, uh, into the topic I wanted to uh, uh, cover on the, the back of um, the dignity of the human being. Um, and that topic was to do with um, organ donation. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have time to go into it today, but what I want to do is to uh, finish from the side of dignity um, of the human being uh, today with even in, as I was saying about the warfare situation, not being the status quo. Yeah. Peace, kindness, justice, yeah, forgiveness, overlooking, pardoning people, that is the status quo for believers. Yeah, that goes in line with the dignity of all human beings. Yeah, of all human beings, whether they're believers, disbelievers, whether they're fire worshippers, idol worshippers, whatever gender they are, whatever gender they claim to be. Yeah, 
uh, whether they're uh, drunkards or whether they're thieves, whether they're in a prison or not, yeah, or whether they're murderers, yeah. Um, we, of course, abhor, abhor the acts, yeah, but not the person. And that's not easy to do, of course. That requires reflection and thinking, does it not, brothers and sisters? In, in theory, it's easy for me to say. In practice, it's not that easy to practice, is it? So we have uh, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu I just remembered that from the Bani Israel, the Prophet Sallallahu said there was a, a, a person, a big scholar, a muttaqi, God-fearing person. And he was so pious and God-fearing that when he used to sit, yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to send a cloud over him to shade him from the sun. So at one time when he's sitting there, this person comes who is known to be a bad person in society. Yeah, Farsik, you could say. Um, somebody who's into all sorts. So this bad person tries to come and sit next to this saintly person who is under the shade of the uh, uh, cloud and comes near to try and share the shade. And this person, uh, I've forgotten the exact words of Hadith, but I'm giving you a gist of the story. This person, who's a saintly, godly person, looks down on this Farsic, yeah, person whose life was upside down and like looks down and saying to him, what are you doing sitting next to me under the shade? Why are you sharing this? Meaning somebody filthy like you, dirty behavior. How dare you come and uh, try and share this cloud with me? Yeah. So the Prophet said, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the shade, the cloud shade from him and put it over this Fasik person. Another story, which is an authentic hadith, Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, is that there were two friends and they'd grown up together, known each other all their lives. One went down the road of uh, not being a good person, fasting, doing all, getting into all sorts of uh, bad. Yeah. And the other one became godly. Uh, a person of uh, religion and uh, close to God, doing good works and worshipping Allah. And every now and then, yeah, after time passed, they used to meet after some time. And every time they used to meet, the godly person would say to the, uh, the, the bad person, you really need to stop what you're doing. It's not right. Yeah, this is very bad what you're doing. You should do, be doing this and doing that. And then he'd meet him again after some time and be a bit more harsh. Yeah. Then he'd meet him again. And the final time he met him and he really upset uh, the, the bad person because he became very angry with him and said, this is disgusting what you're doing. And he said, you are going to go to hellfire. Yeah. You are going, you're going to be put in hellfire. I'm telling you you are one of the dwellers of hellfire. Yeah, that's the kind of statement he made, like a judgmental statement. Um, so the Prophet Sallallahu said, they were raised up on the day of judgment. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala first challenged the godly person, yeah? And said to him, who gave, who gave you the right? to take my throne and make a judgment on anybody. And Allah SWT cast them into hellfire instead and forgave the other person. So these, uh, these are uh, authentic stories from Prophet but they're, they're a warning again for us, yeah, if anything, of not being judgmental about people. Yeah? And it brings out again uh, for 
us the idea of the dignity of the human being, not the taking position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and of having a respect and kindness, which is the way, that's why, yeah. we have not sent you down except the mercy to the whole creation. So here's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who's, who's the most merciful, the most compassionate, sends the most, uh, the mercy to the whole of creation and sends as rahma his Quran. And then we have people interpreting Islam as that which came to kill and subdue everybody who's a disbeliever. Either they subdue, become Muslim, otherwise we we'll chop their heads off or kill them. I mean, how far away has the apple fallen from the tree, as they say in English? to have that kind of interpretation coming out, yeah? Of that, that kind of interpretation coming out. Um, the mind boggles, as they say sometimes, but I'm afraid it is there uh, to be found in, in, the, uh, in the books, uh, as well as in present day ideas of people. Um, I'm going to stop there today. I'll have to cover the issue. Why do I link this with the issue of organ donation? I'll leave you a taster with it. Because one of the reasons why some people objected to organ donation uh, is linked with the dignity of the human body. They try to use that to, to basically say it is not allowed because the human body is being dignified by Allah and therefore we cannot open it up, dissect it. Yeah, That's one of the th things they used only. I'm not going to open up the discussion on that. That I'm going to cover, inshallah, in the next lesson. And all the other arguments are presented by some people and what the best opinion with evidence in regards to blood donation and organ donation is uh, inshallah in the in the coming class next week uh, I think that's all I have to say today if there's any questions on what we've covered uh, please the not the floor but the mic is open inshallah if there's any questions in writing uh, Zafar please uh, uh, take note and if you can read them out to me uh, as necessary as well yeah Anything? Anybody? You can send it in writing or you can ask uh, across the mic. No problem with that. Complete silence. It's not always a good sign, complete silence. Uh, either it shows somebody's too busy uh, playing a game or eating their food which they're enjoying and they don't want to be disturbed or they didn't understand what I was talking about it's gone over the head uh, well I suppose you could say it's all yeah. very clear sorry question um, you said that they were brought forth on the day of judgment but that hasn't happened yet so yeah, how could they be the Prophet starts on giving you a picture on the Day of Judgment of what will happen. Did you get that? Yes, thank you. Yeah, when he said, yeah that's what it means. Any other questions or clarifications? I, I, of course, uh, the Hadith number eight I do a, a, a shout out of it today, an exposition of it today. Those who, want, who missed that, it, it will be, it is available, it's been recorded. Uh, how Zephyr is going to get it to you, that's a different matter. I know some of you asked for other recordings as well. I don't think it's been sorted yet, but uh, I hope it will be sorted soon so this, the whole uh, thing is available. Any other questions? No other questions? You're get, getting off early today. It's only five to eight. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Suhail here. Assalamu rahmatullah. Welcome, Suhail. Doctor, <laughs> I haven't spoken to you for a long time. 
كيف الحال؟ الحمد لله الله يسلمك. So very important uh, saying that uh, Prophet peace be upon him stood up for that uh, funeral passing by. So we we should be attending funerals of non-believers. Did we talk about this in the past? Yeah, and many ulama allowed for if you have friends or family who are non-Muslim, are you allowed to attend a funeral? I mean, what they meant was that you're not allowed to take part in the service. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so if it's Christian service, we're not Christian, so we're not going to partake of that. Or if it's a Hindu service and they're burning the body, well, I wouldn't really like to attend the funeral. Um, mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, some of the things we have to keep in mind of what we accept or not. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't attend the funeral, but you know, in the end, perhaps we apply it to when a funeral car is going by, that we, uh, nowadays, it's not going by by carried by human beings or on a horseback and then people are on the way on the street, as it used to happen in all, all the world. And people would stand up out of, out of respect, wouldn't they? That was the practice. Nowadays, the cars just go by and you're not really able to stand up. So, yeah. I hope that clarifies. Yes, exactly. It does. Thank you. See, I, I, even attending and standing, it doesn't contradict the fact that uh, from the, the Quran saying for the mushrikeen that you're not allowed to ask for forgiveness for them. Yeah. Just because you stand up out of respect, you're not making a dua to ask for forgiveness for them. Just because you attend a funeral and not partake of the service doesn't mean you're automatically asking for forgiveness for them, which is not allowed, of course. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, I just uh, want to um, just want to clarify that because I have been to a few a Catholic funeral. And it was in the church, but I didn't take part in it. I just sat at the back and I didn't go to the grave, graveyard. But it was just out of respect because it was um, so, uh, um, a Muslim who's, you know, who had converted. So it was her mother. So it was supporting her. So, I mean, that's what I did. And I, I thought it was OK. Um, it's so absolutely you think fine. it was acceptable. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely fine. Um, Sheikh Dursh said that, Rahimahullah, the great Sheikh Dursh, well, I don't know if he'd like me calling the great Sheikh Dursh, but Sheikh Dursh, Rahimahullah, who was the Imam and scholar of Regent's Park, uh, some of you on here may know him, I'm showing my age really, um, he said back in the 80s, he gave permission for that kind of attendance, sitting in the back of the church, not joining in the service, and there's, there's nothing wrong with you even to go to the, uh, the burial ground, nothing. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Brother Zareen. Um, was the Quran exclusive to humans and jinn? Was the Quran exclusive to humans and jinn? Well, who else is going to be to? What do they mean? We only know of humans and jinn that Allah created. Yes, the answer would be yes, wouldn't it? And for the the band brings that out. Which of the favors and bounties of your Lord will you both deny? Yeah, it's talking to human and jinn, the two kind of creation. And the Prophet starts to meet in the jinn, which I mentioned in Sira as well. Was it also for the whole of creation as per I didn't read that last part? Uh, creation or perhaps for other unknown creations. No, we, all, we, we only know what we know. The Quran was sent to us through the Prophet Sallallahu Yeah, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi didn't go. All we know is that he did meet with the jinn and that the jinn are addressed in the Quran. How much more about the jinn is very limited knowledge I've said before. So no, we don't go into any other uh, fields of it was sent to other people on other planets, etc. Not relevant to us. The Quran oh, oh, oh. Is Allah SWT also, also says, uh, وَمَا خَرَتُ الْجِنُ وَالْإِنسِ اللَّهِ لِيَعْبُدُونَ Isn't it? So, meaning, you know... Yeah, that, that's, that's not saying there's no other creation. That's just saying I only created jinn and... Uh, I didn't create jinn and human beings except for worshipping and serving me. Yeah, meaning you would indicate the Quran is only for, for humans and jinn. It doesn't. That, that doesn't really indicate it. Uh, but the fact that the Quran says, وَدَلِّ النَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتِ مِنَ الْهُدَىٰ 
Yeah. Well, Furqan, Quran saying it, guidance for humanity. Not guidance for angels, for example. Is that right? Yep. Gu guidance for humans. And yes, secondarily, you can say guidance for jinn and guidance of human beings who are alive. It's, and it's a guidance for this earth where we're living. And this life, not a guidance for barzakh and not guidance in the hereafter. Not a guidance for the dead. Anything else? No. Okay. Well, we finished early today, so I'm sorry you didn't get your tuppence worth. Um, <laughs> as, is, as, as we said in Yorkshire, uh, I, I'm sure everybody understands tuppence worth. Yeah, ne? <laughs> Two pennies worth. Two pennies. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so um, inshallah, we shall uh, resume and I will go into the uh, too young for that lingo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only you can get away with saying that to me. Too young. Um, inshallah, we hope we'll get into the topic uh, next time immediately of um, uh, this uh, organ donation and blood donation, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. La tansawna fi dua'ikum. Don't forget us in your prayers. And uh, brothers and sisters, we hope to meet next week, inshallah ta'ala. Allah gives his life. Um, so so with your permission. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.